introduce Canon from Intel to talk about Gen AI for Enterprises, practical considerations from pilot to scale. Please give him a warm welcome. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in here. I don't see any lunch plates, uh, so I hope I actually live up to your expectations and uh, keep your focus for at least 10 minutes or so. So this is Kanan Kiranam. I'm actually part of Intel's data center and AI organization. And I focus mainly on dealing with customers, right? Customers and customers, most of the times dealing with them through partners or directly with the customers themselves. Talking about what else Gen AI these days, right? A lot of discussions around Gen AI for enterprises specifically, right? So before I jump into um, the uh, presentation itself, I just want to actually quickly call out that I may be making some forward-looking statements today. Uh, please do not go by whatever I say here. You know, talk to us, look at Intel's websites, and then make your own decision on what you want to actually do with uh, your Gen AI journey and how Intel can help you. Right. So um, some context setting here. Right. There is a lot of pro promise, excitement, and momentum in the Gen AI space, and all of us are actually, you know, taken by storm after Chat GPT uh, late last year, and then with all this AI. Um, hype slash reality around, um, I want to share a couple of small stories on how this whole thing manifested, right? So I'm a very picky eater from southern part of India and vegetarian, and uh, it's very difficult for me to find food where I go and all that. And if I'm actually a picky eater, you just need to meet my father-in-law who is like picky eater squire, right? So he just calls me after this whole chat GPT and AI hype, and he says, hey, I just learned that uh, AI is going to do a lot of wonders and I only can eat your mother-in-law's food. Can it be <laughs> making food for me soon? And I can actually uh, you know, have some lesser dependencies. And I said, like, that day has not come yet, but uh, stay tuned, right? So that's one side. And then I actually lived in the UK for a while and getting a driver's license there is very difficult. And recently one of my friends called, hey, my daughter is actually preparing for a driver's test and I hear a lot about generative AI. How, how can it help get uh, my daughter a driver's license without, like you, you did seven times to pass your test. So, so it's all like a lot of hype, but then we transition into what I do every day, which is like dealing with enterprises, right? So enterprise gen AI is a whole different ball game where people are looking for uh, solving real problems, hard problems that actually matter today for them, right? So they want to actually see exceptional revenue growth. They want to actually drastically reduce costs. They want to be able to accelerate decision making, go on and on, right? So countless number of promises being made by generative AI and what the art of possible. We're going to actually live in a world five years from now where it's going to be like completely different, but there are a lot of promises. Now, is this just a hype? You know, some of these hype cycles can actually come and go, but is this really a hype or is this some substance and we do see a lot of investments going into generative AI, right? Billions being spent on really making this happen such that there is no discussion of an AI winter ever again, right? It's all going to be AI summer. So this is not just a hype. This is definitely uh, promising uh, enterprises to actually gain competitive advantage. But at the same time, you see this is impacting a lot of different industries and potentially a number of different um, use cases. At Intel, in my job, I actually deal with a lot of customers, and one of the first customers that we actually uh, dove deep into with enterprise uh, AI had real um, hard problems for us to solve. Right? They said, like, we have around 50 years worth of data, around 8 to 10 terabytes of data, which is all kinds of documents. Uh, we actually leverage those documents to make real business decisions, to show up in front of my customer tomorrow to give them a specific advice, I need to actually rely on the wealth of 50 years of knowledge that my company has generated in those documents. How can Intel help us glean real insights um, within, say, six to eight weeks? And is that really possible? Now, this is unlike my father-in-law's ass. This seemed like a challenge that we should go after, and there is real money and value behind it. right? So we went after that. And there were a lot of challenges to actually go and make that happen within that six to eight weeks period. But we were actually completely taken by surprise and the potential of how these LLMs were able to actually produce the results that the enterprise was really looking for, right? To the extent that we were able to generate 
uh, natural language queries were able to generate the uh, kind of responses they were looking for to summarize the documents that came out as the results of the query. And not only did the summaries came relatively accurately, it also actually was able to show the specific documents where those results came from and inside those documents, which pages had that sort of information, right? So this is real stuff and it is impacting every single industry and some of these horizontal use cases that you see here, cross industry ones, are really propelling the competitive advantage of uh, that particular industry that uh, uh, you're dealing with, right? Now, easier said than done when we actually talk to our engineering team about, okay, uh, this is what we're gonna actually have to do, everything needs to be done in six to eight weeks, how are we gonna do? These sort of practical questions emerge. But hang on a minute, what about the size and complexity of data, right? This is not trivial. This is not like one type of data. You have all kinds of structured and unstructured data. How are we gonna deal with that, right? What about the security, right? I don't wanna actually be calling some API that is sitting elsewhere outside of my firewall, right? So I wanna actually have it all self-contained within my VPC. You know, even this morning, we actually learned about um, what uh, AnyScale and Ray uh, are going to do with the um, private instances, right? And then you talk about um, training and inference complexities, it's not trivial, right? So scalability is a big problem, right? So how do I deal with scaling my workloads across a heterogeneous compute environment? That is what we need to deal with, right? So while everybody wants those H100 uh, GPUs or like Intel Gaudi 2s or whatnot, the supply is not meeting the demand. The demand is just you know, skyrocketing. So how are we gonna actually deal with some sort of heterogeneity where you need to carefully think about the left-hand side of the funnel all the way from data ingestion to loading and data preparation can actually happen very well on a CPE bound um, architecture and then it can actually transition into a heavy duty GPU slash acceleration bound activity when you talk about inference and uh, training. So there are like several different challenges when you talk scale and those things do not actually surface until you really deal with this sort of scale that um, uh, LLMs are actually pushing us to look at. Simple example being a um, few weeks ago we were trying to actually massively ingest data, you know, I talked about the size of data, eight to 10 terabytes of data, right? So when we started ingesting some of that, we wanted to actually ingest a lot more. And then it turns out that uh, there was a small bug in the, um, uh, you know, one of the Python uh, scripts we had, and then it was not dealing with escape sequences properly, right? But then we started seeing some hallucinations on the other end, and it turns out that some of the objects that were generated did not actually have as much um, uh, uh, tokens that we actually expected it to have, and then the result was hallucination. So to backtrack that and scale it, it required us to have a much more of a automated distributed, you know, scaling uh, methodology to be able to go achieve the scale that we are looking at. So it was not at all trivial to be able to uh, deal with, you know, hundreds and thousands of document, terabytes of document, you know, billions of tokens, and that is where I think actually we have a portfolio of offering from Intel where we actually have uh, accelerators when you need, which is the uh, Gaudi line of processors. The one that is uh, right now uh, out is actually Gaudi 2. Gaudi 1 was the first generation, which is still, you know, if you are an AWS user, you can actually go provision Gaudi 1 there in AWS. And Gaudi 2s are out as well, which are really showing immense performance. And we also have uh, GPUs and Xeons, which are, you know, really uh, catering for the type of workload that you're looking for, you know, graphic intensive or general purpose compute, we actually have these things coming together. Now, we also have a software layer to help that heterogeneous compute possible, right? So while you need heterogeneous compute on the back end, you need a software layer that can actually bring all these things together to be able to actually run your workloads uh, the way you want at scale. Now, here is an example uh, that I would like to call out, right? So we actually have this model called bridge tower model where it is a uh, vision slash language model where we were able to actually train to convergence with the record uh, speed with around 64 nodes, 512 Gaudis, all working in tandem to be able to converge and then so simply can actually in the end ask what color is the uh, ring around the eye of the 
uh, Dragon uh, Sakura, right? So, and it was able to actually pick the right answers uh, and uh, do the inference very um, uh, in an efficient manner. And we recently also actually published MLPerf uh, benchmark results based on um, Gaudi 2, which is the Intel's uh, latest uh, Intel accelerator, which is like 2x of A100, which is like uh, 84 um, samples per second across eight accelerators, right? And uh, if you are uh, experimenting and looking at, you know, which models to choose, you know, how do I scale, please go to Hugging Face, where actually we have a lot of information around Gaudi 2 scaling, be it like a BERT large model pre-training or whether you are dealing with a T5 model or a stable diffusion uh, bloom, we have impressive numbers that to actually showcase that you have a credible alternative with Intel to scale your um, uh, deep learning and generative AI workloads, right? And uh, last but not the least, you actually heard uh, Jan uh, talk about um, uh, native Ray support for um, uh, Intel's Gaudi 2. So at a time where the accelerators are in huge demand, we want to actually make sure that the scaling possibilities are actually maximized for all any scale and Ray uh, users out there whether you're you know, doing the systematic uh, training your model, preparing your deployment, deployment at scale, or you are actually looking to leverage um, Intel for any one of these aspects, we actually can easily automate that and help your distributed scaling through uh, Ray with native support for Gaudi 2 very soon. So we expect this to be out uh, later this year. So we can't wait the users to uh, get hold of uh, Gaudi 2s through you know, massive scaling through distributed uh, um, uh, any scale support as well, right? So with that, I really wish you have a great conference today and tomorrow. Uh, so there is a lot more to discuss and learn from each other. If you have any questions, please see me offline. But uh, otherwise, enjoy your conference.